Hi everyone, Alex here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. Kate F. Morrow Grove. Elizabeth Cornwell. Kerry Lloyd. Casey Peevler. Flighty Broad. Rebecca Coffey. Tatum B. Addie Batts. Gladys Gonzalez. Zed Newton Whitaker. Anna Z. Megan Griffin. Empty Face Buttercup. Catherine Quinar. Kylie Perry. Emily Johnson. John Cullen. Metro 4. Megan O'Grady. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. Special thanks to Sea Glass and Duck Pond. May your partnership never end in a cataclysm of woe. Rusty Quill presents... Stella Firma. David, uh, David, yes. yes, I'm David. David. Yes, how David. are you? Stop right there. I'm fantastic. You, you look like a fantastic clone to me. Uh, thanks. This is a new day, David. A new breed. A new batch. A new, a new harvest of David Seven and Trexel Geisman working together. Yes. Feeling, focusing, fermenting. Perhaps don't drink it too soon. It's not. It's not enough alcohol in yet. Take a sip. Too much alcohol. You've gone blind. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. Now on the subject of alcohol. Yes. You are still. Very, very late for work. Sure. Um, but I suppose that's been working, so... It's it's the way we do it, David. Good job, I guess. Um, Don't what? question success. If you start questioning success, success turns around to you and says, Who the hell do you think you are? Okay. I'm success. Get out of my successful office! Well, in which case, I won't question why we're succeeding if you won't question why we're succeeding. Ooh, a gambit, a bargain, a deal. Shake my hand. Uh, Don't uh, touch uh, my oh, hand. Okay, well, we'll do an eye shake then. There it is. Secret eye communication will not be tolerated. Right, so we've got a submission from... Initiating... Lulabella Annas Marum, uh, the universe's greatest romantic novelist. I'm not making a judgement. That is written there as part of their name. Push on, David, push on! Well, they want this planet built because I can't write on any existing planet, darling. I can't. It's impossible. My David, work... David, re- can I stop you there? Could you please do some sort of voice? Lula Bella, a, a great romantic novelist. I'm a fan of their work. Okay. But this is just so flat, David. Please, can you give it some more life? Give it some more oomph? Some more, some more zhuzh? David, give it some uh, I'll, zhuzh. I'll, 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 I'll think of some zhuzh. Work it. Zhuzh it, buster. Because I can't write on any okay, existing David, planet, gonna, gonna, darling. You're going to no, you're gonna have to take that, take that back 20%, David, because okay. that, that's insulting. That's an insult right. to what you're doing. So what, was, what does Lula Bella Annas Marum sound like? So, sort of like, um, like you know uh, when you've got a, a large carafe of port, gently cooling uh, on, on, a, on a star port. Right. Just well, that, that unctuousness. Unctuousness is what I'm going for, David. Okay. Uh, because I can't write on any existing planet, darling. No, you're not bored, David. You're not bored. Because I can't write on any existing planet, darling. I can't. It's impossible. My work requires me to replicate the very essence of human nature. The truth of mortal passion and reality is simply dire as a muse. Sweetness. Real people are humdrum, boring, vulgar. No, to truly compare the soaring greatness of the living soul, I need to be as far away from actual people as possible. People have germs. They're awful. So I need you to build me a planet that speaks to me of love, of passion, of the permanency of the soul and of true connection between beings, while not actually having me anywhere near anyone else. Yes, a planet-wide writing retreat. Exactly. Thank you, Sugar Plum. I knew you'd understand. How was that? You did, you, you did very well there, actually. Okay. Well, I was I was lost. I was transported. I sort of stopped listening midway through. It was rather a, a, a long submission. It, but it was quite long. But what, what's, what's the distilled point? A writing retreat? Away from humans so that they can write on humans. Interesting. Hang on. 
on humans? Humans as paper? Interesting. No, on the subject of humans. Oh, I see. Like like you need to be a far away from a thing in order to observe a thing through powerful binoculars because you've got a restraining order. Possibly, yes, but let's just get through the one feature before we start designing. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, You know, you're very keen. I am keen. I'm keen as punch. That is good. Happy punch! We have about... 17 minutes left, so that's good that you're keen. Keen. Okay, right. Well, yes, we're, we're so the one feature. Keen. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Keep, keep going. Okay, so the so one. Keen over here. The no, one. Sorry. Keen. The one feature we need is keen. Keenness detected. Security alerted. Should I do this as, as Lulabella? No, no, there's too much of that. I might pass out. Go on. Everything in my planet must speak to the romantic soul. I need sparkling stars, breathtaking views, billowing shirts, and as much as possible of it needs to be pink and mm. frilly. Interesting. 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 Just want to confirm something? Yes. This is Lulabella we're talking about. Lulabella, Annas Marum, the self-proclaimed universe's greatest romantic novelist. Well, I have to admit in this case, as a self-proclaimer myself, they are not lying. They are a wonder, David. Best-selling author, bon vivant of the of the literary world. They are a, a towering figure in short to medium length romantic fiction. Okay, so, well, in which case, for us to get an idea of exactly what Lulabella might be after, um, could you run me through sort of the typical plot of a Lulabella Annus Marum? Um, of course, piece? of course, of course. Let, let's, let's pick a classic. Um, let's, uh, the star venturer of Quadrant J. Story time. Disbelief suspended. Now, the star venturer is a, a, a rapscallion, a buccaneer of sorts, pirate trader, perhaps to his enemies, but in reality, a, a merchant venturer, until he catches the eye of a young poolman, Jonathan Swiftbeak. He looks across the starport in which he is actually tending to a poorly maintained pool and sees, sees the buccaneer there. Yes, yes, that's the man for him, but their love is forbidden. For a lowly pullman cannot cannot consort with a merchant venture of, of of this class, so they steal away in dead of night, which is confusing because on a starport there's no night because it's not like an actual pla- it's not important. They steal away, their parents are furious, and they pursue them across galaxy to galaxy, and everybody loses clothes, and then at the end it's all just naked and sex. Story time over. Disbelief reinstated. Okay. So confusion followed by sex. Yeah, mostly. It's, it's people being hot and confused, and then they have sex. Right. So that's how Lulabella sort of sees humanity and, and, and gets to their essences, as they say. Yes, well, if you really boil humanity down, and I must stress, not actually, because if you actually boil humanity down, it's just sort of mush and there's bones. But if you boil the essence of what makes a human down, it's basically confusion and sex. Mm. Mostly confused sex. Well, and also I've noticed here it doesn't say alien, so I'm assuming that... They're a bit, you know... David, 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 this is just the last in a long line of novel series from Lula Bella. Early ones have focused entirely on alien species. It's why Lula Bella is, is in many ways the most prolific author. There's so many markets, David, and so much market share to have because at the core, Lula Bella is a capitalist! Right. Which is good. Yes. Well, for us, certainly. Okay. You can't afford one of our planets unless you're some sort of ruthless capitalist masquerading as a romantic novelist. Ah. So this is what they like. They, they, they're currently into humans. Yes. They like money. Excellent. They don't like humans. No, no. Like, close. They like the idea of humans, but not the actual application of them? That's the case with most things. Okay. Most things, I like the idea of it. For example, a lovely drink. Okay. It glistens there on a shelf. You sip it down. Ooh, it's cool in your throat. Smash cut to six hours later. You're on fire. You know, it just sort of gets out of hand. Speaking of, the other thing that that they seem to be into is confusion. Yes. Heat. Sure. And sex, although... That wasn't part of that story. So that's we want a hot, related. sexy, confused planet. Well, that's basically what you said most of their books are about. So. Yes, okay, okay. So so you want somewhere that allows you with enough perspective on humanity to write a book without being bothered by humanity itself. Mm-hmm. So you boil humanity down to its core elements. Mm. Confusion, heat, sex. Yes. And you just take those concepts and you insert them into a planet. Begin as you mean to end, but without any of the confusing actual humans to bother you. Okay, begin as you mean to end. So how do you begin confusion? You begin confusion in the desert, David. Okay, and how do you end confusion? You end with sex. And how do you begin heat? Like sun. I don't know. And how do you end heat? Uh, ice sun. Okay, and how do you begin sex? Okay, well, when one being loves another being or feels that they uh, really just want to get 
very close to another being, or they don't like themselves all that much and hope that another being will allow them to feel better. Or well, there's, there's there's lots of scenarios. Okay, and how does sex end then? Okay, crying, uh, recriminations, right. and also normally people bursting into the door and saying, "That's my wife slash husband." Love is a lie. Okay, so we've got a desert. Yes. A sun. Shut up, David. Shut up. Shut up. Role play Holovision initiated. A desert world. A nomadic species treks across the desert with something kind of like a camel, but not really a camel. On their backs, they hold aloft a litter covered in satin and silk, and inside that litter, a sexy, sexy bed. It's so hot out here, but there are fronds covering you from the direct sunlight. And in that litter, a writer's room. Six aspiring writers tapping away at typewriters coming up with the best romantic fiction. Far away from actual humans, but it's hot. It's sexy. Why are you in the desert? You're so confused. Wait, well, no, I am confused because I thought Lula Bella was the one writing these novels. So why have you got six writers David. writing these novels? Roleplay Holovision terminated. Are you an idiot, David? Are you are you a, a stupid child idiot, like a like a like a an underexperienced mollusk on the bottom of a boat of ignorance? Well, no. They don't write their own novels, really, David. Oh. All the most successful writers have staff. Right. And you and you and you take that staff wherever you go, and they produce content. And obviously, you've bound them into contracts of labour, and they come up with the stories. You put your little spin on it. You pop your name on there. Away you go. You publish. Literature is a lie. Right. That's how you get into as many market segments, because as I mentioned, it's all about market share. Okay, so, well, one thing is, are these writers clones? Clones? No, 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 no. Stella Firma has a very, very strong, strong uh, proprietary technology when it comes to clones. Not many other, not many other species have cloning technology. Right, well, that's good to know, I guess. Also, there's loads of people that are just poor and you can buy. Okay, um... Good, I suppose. Not good, David. How, oh, my David. What? Good? What? The purchasing of people is good to you. What? I'm sorry. I don't think I can endorse any of this. Well, no, we, 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 we capitalism. I'm high-roading you on this, David. Well, I'm sorry. Look well, down on okay, that well, low we, road you're on. Okay, so where do you put clones with that, then? Watch it, Buster. Oh, clones are property. No, well, I'm a clone. Yeah, nobody birthed you. What? Uh, David, you're my Imogen friend. birthed me. She's my mummy. Not legally. Imogen isn't a... Oh, do you call Imogen mummy? That's weird. No, no, I don't. You don't call do. Imogen Mummy, don't you? Mm, no, I, I don't. Little David with it with a comp- with a robo mum. Well, do you speak to her at night? Um, do you say, "Tell me a bedtime story, Imogen"? Oh no, I don't, because she's off and uh, we don't have access. David, I wasn't. I've never spoken I, to Imogen. David, I wasn't accusing you of anything. There, oh no, that's fine. I was just informing you of the fact that I've never spoken to Imogen ever. Demonstrably untrue. All right, you've got a bit intense, David. I'll I'll move away from it because clearly you've got a weird relationship with Imogen that I'm not privy to, and that's not my purview. Well, Imogen birthed me, so maybe maybe owning clones isn't good. Well, Trexel, I mean, you've, you've raised that. You've raised a strong point there. Is the designation of clones as property a bad thing? Hmm. Introspective dissidents will be crushed. Oh, there's a gun. There is a gun. Oh, so oh I there's think a gun out of the wall. Don't, 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 don't worry, David. We're um, working through this now. A gun has appeared from the wall. That normally means that uh, Imogen and, and, by extension, Stella Firma Limited have very strong opinions on this topic. Do you Mummy, think they're... is that gun pointed at... I mean, Imogen, is that gun... I mean, I've never spoken to you. Who are you? Okay, let's just let's just sort this one out. Clones are property. End of story. Yes, and I'm very happy about it. There goes okay. the gun. Okay, no, that, you know, that settles that debate. Okay. Clones are property. Yep, that seems very... Fair. Wonderful and right. Stuff. Watch it, Busters. Wonderful. Stuff. Hail the board. Hail the board. Hail the board. Clones are things. Yes. Okay. So. I, I just said that because that sign lit up on the wall that said hail the board. I assume it. H- hail the board? Okay, the light's gone away now. Wonderful stuff. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. We have a, a, a desert world. So we, we, we've got a desert world. That's a good start, David. That's a good start, isn't it? Uh, yes. But so where is... We've got a desert world yes. with one train of things that are kind of like camels. Yes. And there's a litter with a sexy bed with six writers sitting on it. Yes. And writing. We, can, we can have many of these. This could be a real camel okay. train. Loads of, loads of them. Where's Lula Bella? Ah, well. In some sort of hideaway? Yes. Underground? Yes, that's a good idea. Because you know what? The writers need to be sort of hot and confused and sexy. No reason that Lula Bella can't be more relaxed. Put underground. Cool. Underground sex bunker. 
Oh, not the complete opposite. So not cold, unsexy, and very much in control of the situation. No, no, no. Temperature controlled. Okay. Pretty sure what's going on. Mm-hmm. Very sexy. Very sexy. So we need a we need some sort of we need some sort of romantic love bunker in which Lula Bella can sort of sit and relax and contemplate the small edits to the largely finished novel that they're going to put out. Okay, Trexel. Well, it sounds like you know a lot about sex, and this is some sort of love bunker. Yes. And as we've established, I have absolutely no idea what anything of the sexuals is for. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so what is a love bunker to you? How would you design a love bunker for Lulabella and Asmarum? Right, well, I, I have a lot of experience in this area because of all the people I've slept with absolutely 100% have. Now, um... Yes, that's okay. why I'm asking you. Yes, no, no, I, I'm not, I'm not, yes, okay, well, so what you're asking me is, mm-hmm. Drexel, in your very, very great experience, what do people... When they're in a sexy, sexy context, what do they want? Yes. From, so, from the many encounters that you have, have absolutely had over the years with all of the people that, that must just think you're just just gravy, what from they have you learned about the, 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 the great, great act of both lovemaking and relationship having? Is that what you're asking? Uh, well, uh, that was a lot longer than I would have liked to ask, so I don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to be able to repeat that back to you. But yes, fundamentally, Trexel, you have had sex. Yes, Absolutely. What is a love bunker? Okay. How would you make one? If okay. you had a love bunker, what would it be? Also, in this situation, you are Lula Bella Anis Marin. Okay, okay, let me set the scene. Roleplay Holovision initiated. You've got... Oh! Let's say two people. Two? And they they are... They are... They are friends. Okay, but two, more two, than friends. More than friends. Two more friends. Two more than friends. Wait, two more friends or... No, no two people friends. who are more than friends. Okay, so it's two people. You could have four. I'm not judging, David. I'm not a judger. Okay, for four friends. Unless, of course, I've been asked to judge a competition, in which case, watch out, because I've got a pointy finger and a sharp mind. So four friends? Let's say three friends. Let's make it a three. Three, three friends. Okay, so you've got three sexy, sexy friends. Three oh, sexy, sexy friends. And okay. they are, oh, let's say, uh, covered in, in, in oil. Three oily, sexy friends. You've got to oil up beforehand. Otherwise, things just grip uncomfortably, I'm sure. Ah, so three oily, slippery, sexy friends. Yes, yes, yes. One of them says, I know. Why don't we do a sex? And everybody agrees, and and they shake hands. And everyone's shaking hands for for a good 20 minutes. Oily, slippery, shaking hands, 20 minutes. Let's do that, yes. Let's let's do that. Um, And then then a big curtain just sort of comes across and just sort of covers everything up. Okay. And then there's sort of, like, hammering and sort of, like, soaring noises and, like, the honking of a horn and, and like, a a horse galloping past and and then, like, like the sound of an arrow hitting a piece of wood and going... Uh, And then it, it opens up and everyone's got kids. Everyone's got kids, and they're ignoring them. They're ignoring the children because they're the reason they're no longer oily and fun. Yikes. Okay, and is Lulabella one of these friends, or is Lulabella just watching this play out in front of them? If I'm honest, David, I've somewhat lost track of where Lulabella is in, is in all of Okay, this. well, so far we've got three oily, sexy friends. Yes. One of them says... Let's do a sex. Okay. They shake hands for 20 minutes. I've got it. There's some sound rambles. Two-way mirror. And then you got sad? Two-way mirror. All this is happening. Lula Bella is on the other side of a two-way mirror, just writing stuff down. Right. Writing notes to pass up to the nomad writing units. Right, so you're saying that Lula Bella has three caged, oily humans who sex for her. Okay, saying that back, that sounds even better than when I was actually saying it the first time. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're handsomely paid. Everybody's signed an NDA. You're having fun. Okay, so you've got three oily sexy employees yes. who are being friends. Absolutely. What are friends? Well, they're shaking hands, so they've got to be friends. More friendly than me and you, because I'm not allowed to shake your hand. But they are being looked at by Lula Bella on the other side of a two-way mirror, but really, they know they're on the other side of the mirror. No one's fooling anyone. No one. Um, and all this time, they're writing stuff down as the other individuals finish shaking hands and some honking noises happen and then an argument. Exactly. Exactly. You've got it. You've got it. Right. You know You know how the birds and the bees are, are now made. Wait, what are, what are birds and bees? It's not important. It? They're basically flying insects. Now, you need to make sure that this bunker is not findable by the writing teams because the writing teams are very cross about the notes they've been handed. Okay. They're so oily and incomprehensible. Well... Given that we have run out of time and that red light is flashing, oh, I'm going to write like down well submit. hidden and boop. There we go. There it, there, it oh, there it goes off to the bill team. That was a weird noise. Is that one? No, up? there wasn't. No, nope, that just a, went straight. Clunk. Nope. A weird clunk. No. 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 Okay. Oh, well, that I... was um, that was me sitting down on my clunk chair. See, clunk. 
You've got a very clunky butt today, David. Stop it, it's irritating. Uh, yes, uh, I have stopped my clunky butt. As what? you listen... No clonking. No clonking. No clonking on this butt. Yep. David Seven's butt. 100% clonk free since just now. That's what they say about me and my butt. Who's talking about your butt? Tell me. Give me names. I demand answers. Trexel Geisman? Ah, I like that guy. Okay. Well, uh, good work. Yes. Oh, no. Very, very good work, Trexel. I'm sure Hartra will be incredibly pleased with the planet that we designed today. Yes, I know. It's, it's a planet we, I designed, so I don't being weird about it. I was just reminding you that you are a very capable and talented planet designer, as was proven in the review you just had, so go have a celebratory drink at the Cosmic Lounge. I will. I will. And I'll order one for you. I won't send it to you because that's not allowed. And I'll drink it. And then I'll order you another. And then I'll be like, whoa, slow down, David Seven. That's too many jigs. Oh, I'm falling. I'm falling. (laughs) Ah, fun. All right. See you later. Bye. How is this working? I know he's stupid, or, or at least drunk, but even so, how has he not noticed what I'm doing? The designs aren't his, and, and he knows something is wrong, but... Oh, I don't know. I, I wonder, wouldn't there be some sort of test or entry exam or something to become a consultant? Hmm. Imogen Online. How can I help you? Um, David Seven? Ac- access personnel files. Warning. Restricted access. Use universal permissions. Access granted. Let's see. Let's... Ooh, there's a recording of his last assessment. Accessing. So, Mr. Gisman, what would you do in the case of a Category B failure of a gravitational well generator? Geistman. Sorry? It's Geistman. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Trexel Geistman. Oh. Trexel Geistman, what? damn you, it's Trexel Geistman. I am Trexel Geistman. Recording ends. Final assessment score. Outstanding ancestry. Right. Stella Firma is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill Limited and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It was created by Tim Meredith and Ben Meredith and produced by Larry Ann Davis with executive producer Alexander J. Newell. In today's episode, Imogen was played by Imogen Harris, David Seven was played by Ben Meredith, and Drexel Geisman was played by Tim Meredith. The episode was edited by David Devereaux and Alexander J. Newell with music by Samuel D.F. Jones and artwork by Annika Khan. To subscribe, buy merchandise or join our Discord, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us online. Tweet us at the Rusty Quill. Join our Reddit community on r slash rustyquill. Visit us on Facebook or email us via mail at rustyquill.com. May the board preserve and keep you.